Illinois followed up an emotional win over Michigan with one of their toughest stretches of the season. The Fighting Illini played a solid first half in their battle with Big Ten leader and fifth-ranked Wisconsin. The Badgers responded with big runs at the end of each half that proved to be the difference. Wisconsin rolls on here in Madison. Illinois returned home for a rematch with a Michigan State squad looking for revenge two weeks after the Illini won in East Lansing. After an extremely physical first half, the Spartans pulled out to an 11-point lead in the second half before the fighting Illini unleashed a full-court press to cut the lead to three. Sophomore Kendrick Nunn had a chance to tie the game with 44 seconds left. Malcolm with a dribble drive out top to Nunn for the tie, and he missed it. Rebound, Dawson can't get a handle on it. The Illini get it back, but then Michigan State takes it away and Trice was fouled. After the miss, the Spartans sealed the game from the free throw line and escaped Champaign with the win. The Fighting Illini headed to Iowa City to get back on track. Illinois seniors Ahmad Starks and Ravante Rice had solid performances that kept the Illini in the game. Starks gave the Illini a 43-42 lead with 14 minutes to go, but the Hawkeyes responded with an 11-2 run that would be too much to overcome. The loss left the Fighting Illini with little margin for error heading into the final three games of the regular season. The game was kind of back and forth right there for the taking for either team. It's like Michigan State where there was two or three possessions Michigan State pushed the lead out. Same thing here. Everybody's got to put 100% effort all the time. And once you get that, then the other stuff can take care of itself. Making sure that you're there for one another. You're looking to your left and looking to your right. Make sure you take care of each other. For the seniors, I mean, it's our last go around. Just give it all we got. Have no regrets. So what did we do well last time when we beat them? Uh, how can we carry that over to tonight? The biggest thing we did last time was make shots. Um, we'll have an opportunity this time to get some good good looks at the rim. It's just about us being patient, taking taking our time, executing like we talked about, um, and then guarding them on the other end. Illinois jumped on Northwestern right from the opening tip, sprinting out to a 12-2 lead. Inside the three-point line, but then they knock down the shot. Here's a pass from Demp, stolen by Malcolm Hill. Dives on the floor to save it. Gets it back to Malcolm in the corner for three, and he got it. Malcolm Hill. Stifling defense and 14 three-pointers would leave no doubt. Rebound, Illinois, none. Right wing to Rice, up for three. Got it. Are you serious? Ray Monte Are Rice. Are you serious? Touch pass to Colbert. Jump pass in the left corner, none. Back to Colbert for the flush. Oh, good two-man game there. Colbert and none. Colbert with a flush. The Illini led wire to wire and won going away 86 to 60. Pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Both ways, offense and defensively. Illinois goes to 18 and 11. 8-8, eight eight, the Big Ten, a much needed win. Illinois finished out their home schedule with a senior night matchup against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. It would be the last time seniors Ryan Schmidt, Ahmad Starks, Ravante Rice, and Nana Egwu would take the floor for the Fighting Illini at State Farm Center. Number 14, Ryan Schmidt! Number three, Ahmad Starks! It's definitely gonna be an experience, you know, the last time out there, just, uh, Know, let you know that the uh, the moments, the moments getting shorter and shorter from being at the end. So um, just want to take it all in and uh, have a good time out there. Number 24, Ray Monte Rice. I feel like just yesterday I was just on campus uh, committing with coaching at the locker room over at State Farm. But I mean, it just goes by fast. And uh, I just advise all those guys to cherish it and give it all they got every game. Number 22. one of the greatest universities in the world. And I think I'm just grateful that I got the opportunity you know, to be able to get a degree from this university. I think that's really the most important part is, you know, and a lot of people get the opportunity to go to college and, and I got to go to one of the best colleges in the country and the world. So I really appreciate that. You really can't explain it, I mean, until you go through it. And just, I mean, it's a great support staff here, coaches, you guys, I mean, just Illinois Crush, I mean, Champagne, it's just all Illini, man. They just bleed orange and blue.
you know, when I committed here, I committed because of tradition and just because to represent the University of Illinois, represent my home state. And I think I, re I, think I really made the right decision. Courtside at the uh, State Farm Center tonight on senior night. The Illini and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. This game is scheduled to tip at 9.06 here this evening. To send the seniors out on a winning note, the fighting Illini would have to crack the Cornhuskers' tough defense. With the Illini offense struggling early, freshman Leron Black provided a spark off the bench. Following the freshman's lead, Illinois went on a 9-0 run to take a five-point lead into halftime. Five and a half to go first half. Starts, step back for three, and he got it. 2016 Illinois leads Nebraska. Black, open, baseline jumper, and he buried it. That's his shot. In the second half, seniors Rayvante Rice and Nana Egwu did what they do best. Rice led the Illini in scoring with 20 points, and Egwu in rebounds and blocks with six and four respectively. Nana even got to provide the punctuation for his last home game as a fighting Illini. Starts, finds, Egwu, senior to senior, and the lead is double digits. The Illini have won it. Another game they had to have, 69. 57 Illinois. Anna Hagel is going to join us here momentarily. Talk about senior night. You know, I've been there. What was it like coming out for the last time? I mean, it's amazing. Um, I don't think it's really going to set in until, uh, until a while from now, but um, I, I'm just glad, you know, we do senior night with a win. I think that's what really makes it special, that we came out here, we fought, the guys fought for us, and, and we got a win out of it. Illinois went to tonight 69-57, win number 9 in the Big Ten Conference, win number 19 on the season. 69-57, your final score. It sets up a big matchup on Saturday afternoon over in West Lafayette. Let's uh, get to the phones right now, and we go to uh, Bill over in Peoria. Hey, Bill, what's going on? The one thing I'm very proud of, other than our team, through the adversity that we've had all year, from injuries and whatever, uh, I think uh, it's been a very character building uh, year for our team and not only that for the ones that will be coming back next year. But the one point and the one thing I am very, very proud of is that the turnout that they had on a late game tonight. The crowd, the backing of this team, they deserve it. You know, I think it's been an honor to share the court as the grades in the past have. You know, I really appreciate that. And, um, it's time for it's time for a change. It's time for a good change. Um, it's gonna be nice. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna look better. It's gonna be a place that's gonna have a really great environment. It's already amazing right now, but uh, I think the new setup is gonna get better, and I can't wait to come back and, and be part of the atmosphere. Sold out Mackey Arena, West Lafayette, Indiana. The site for this one, Illinois and the Purdue Boilermakers. Illinois with a win today, can move ahead of Indiana. They would be the seventh seed. They would play either Minnesota or Northwestern on Thursday evening at the Big Ten Tournament. If they lose, they would be in the 8-9 game against Michigan. Down the road in Indianapolis in another week, there will be a group of people looking at who's in the NCAA Tournament and who's not. And this could be one of those potential games that puts one team in and, and puts another team on the bubble. Let's get the battle underway here in West Lafayette, shall we? And the tap is won by the Boilermaker. The Fighting Illini started with the defensive intensity and mindset needed to steal a game at hostile Mackey Arena, jumping out to a 15-2 lead on the Boilermakers. Rice on the break. Rice to the right wing. Great, Great pass. Feed to Egwu, who slams it in. Timeout, Matt Painter. Left wing to Rice. Thought about a three from 25, does it? Drives in on Matthias, bank shot is good. Purdue tried to answer, but the Illini kept them at arm's length with a couple of jumpers from Malcolm Hill and the dunk of the season from Rebonte Rice. Ray Rice to Nunn, two on one, Nunn, Rice, oh. slam dunk, oh on the alley -oop. Goodness. Henrik Nunn oh. to oh. Rice.
Purdue would not back down, though, and closed the half on an 8-0 run, giving them momentum heading into the locker room. After the break, Kendrick Nunn gave the Illini a four-point lead. The Boilers answered with an 11-0 run. 14-40 for the game, bounce pass inside, Hammond. Great feed from Thompson, slam dunk, timeout Illinois. The fighting Illini struggled to hit shots in the second half, and would trail by as many as 13, before making a furious comeback down the stretch that would cut the lead to five. After Avante Rice's late three fell short, the game ended, along with the regular season. Illinois falls to 19 and 12 on the season. Nine and nine is their final slate in the Big Ten. So we do know that Illinois will be playing at Michigan that they'll meet for a third time in the first game in the Big Ten tournament. tournament edition of Fighting Illini Game Day. Steve Kelly, Marcus Jackson, Lauren Tate with you as the Illini get set to play on day number two of the Big Ten Tournament, the first game of day number two. It'll be Illinois and Michigan in the 8-9 game coming up at 11 o'clock at the United Center. And the tap is won by Nana Agwu. And here we go in Chicago. Michigan would come out firing and jump out to a 14-2 lead. The Fighting Illini would answer with a run of their own to take the lead 19 to 17. Black, seven to shoot, cross court hill, right wing three for the lead, and he got it! Back to Jalen Tate, dribble drive, kick Quick underneath. Man. Black with a slam dunk on the feed from Jalen Tate. Hill to the paint, gets it, drives in, put it up and in! From that point on, it would be all Wolverines as Illinois' stay in Chicago ended abruptly with a 73 to 55 loss. Boy, what an exhibition by Michigan. Uh, the Illinois right now, all you, all you can do is regroup and not let this take you into the postseason, which will more than likely be the NIT. After missing out on the NCAA tournament, the Fighting Illini quickly hit the road to play in the NIT due to renovations back in Champaign at State Farm Center. They faced an inspired Alabama Crimson Tide team that had just found out their coach had been let go two days earlier. Alabama jumped all over the Illini early, and despite Malcolm Hill's 22 points, Illinois' season ended in Tuscaloosa. And that'll do it. Final score, Alabama 79, Illinois 58. Alabama will advance to play Miami, and the Illini will head home, and their season is done. To the News Gazette Sports page from the Esquire, downtown Champaign. Marcus Jackson, Matt Daniels, Bob Osmus, and Ed Bond controlling things here. We'll be here with you till about six o'clock. And uh, for the first time, I guess it's been in, um, in about three years now. We've it's hard got, to believe. We've got Illinois basketball. But I bet coach. these people were sitting here three years ago. <laughs> weren't you? I heard you don't move. Huh? Now, from a basketball perspective, season ended six days ago down in Alabama, NIT. Uh, disappointing end of the season, uh, the, the last couple games of the season. Just, you know, we, we talked a lot about that today. Where are you guys at? And, and um, you know, what, what can you do to get that thing going back in the right direction? Well, the biggest thing is looking at it for what it is. You know, I, I think, you know, the results control them. You, you, you act like as a coach sometimes you can control everything, when in reality there's a lot of things that take place from officiating to a ball bouncing in or not going in to – you know, a lot of different things that you can't control. And we, we take a lot of pride in controlling, you know, our, our mindset, our uh, approach to challenges, how fearless we are, our toughness and our togetherness. And that was probably the most disappointing thing, Marcus, was that in those two games it just wasn't up to our uh, standard. But, uh, you know, part of the season, part of it is finishing strong. And, you know, we'd like to finish a lot stronger, obviously, uh, in terms of how we play the game than we did there in the last two. Before we let you go, there's some people out there looking for some optimism going into the off season. So give them something to, to keep them keep them going until well, uh, August. Well, I think or the September. exciting thing for us, as I said earlier, when you look at it holistically, like you know the fact that we were right there, and then we obviously didn't finish the way that we wanted. You know, I'm looking at it as a body of work. You know, for 31 games, I was awful proud of our guys and how they handled all those curveballs. You know, I think that's something certainly that we can build on. We have newcomers coming. We have Tracy healthy, knock on wood, 
and I know there's going to be some guys on our team that's going to motivate them. And for the guys that it doesn't, quite honestly, they're probably in the wrong locker room. I'm feeling really good right now. Um, really comfortable where I'm at. For the most part, I'm just ready to get out there and compete. We all got to you know, be willing to step up to the plate whenever it's called upon. So, you know, toughness and togetherness and all. That's our motto, but you just got to step it up a little bit more in that aspect. I'm going to be more demanding as a leader. Say what's necessary, do what's necessary. You know, that's, that's my job, and, um, and I'm going to take on that.